Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Firuz Khan, and today I'm back with a brand new class. Um, so, if you haven't liked our page, uh, you can just go to Firuz. Uh, you can go to Facebook and type in Firuz Education Services. We have plenty of videos, probably more than 300 or 250. Um, or you can simply uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Type in Firos Education Services again, and there are around 60 videos all synchronized uh, on a playlist, and it's very convenient and easy to find. We will wait for some students to join, and then we shall start as soon as possible. Um, today, we have a very basic, basic um, business, uh, uh, business theories and knowledge uh, for our O-level students. So this is Chapter 1, Cambridge Business Studies, O-levels, right. Let's start. So as you can see that this is a phone. This is a phone and there's a headphone uh, in the picture. And um, this, this phone belongs to Apple. And Apple can be classified as a company or a business, or you can say it's an institution, organization. It all means the same, right? Um, and what kind of product do they make? They make phones. They also make headphones, laptop, speakers, right? They also have different services. They have Apple Music. You have iCloud, uh, right, where you can store your data. Product are more tangible items. The word that you're looking for is tangible. Tangible means you can touch, you can hold, you can feel. Services is intangible, right? You cannot touch, you cannot see, you cannot hold. For example, if you go to a restaurant uh, to order your food um, or, or eat out with your family, that's a service industry because uh, when you have experienced the service, when you have eaten the food, I mean, literally, you are not uh, carrying the item at, at home, right? You go to a movie theater, you experience the movie. It's not a product. It's a service. Uh, when you go to a salon to have a haircut, um, it's not a product. It's a service. You're experiencing it. So Apple makes products. Apple also have different kinds of services. iTunes, Apple Music, iCloud, um, Apple TV+, Plus, which they recently launched. And what they do is they fulfill needs and wants of the consumer. For example, let's say I want a headphone, a wireless headphone, and Apple will make it for me. So in return, what they're doing is they're fulfilling my needs and wants. So as a business, when you're making products, you need to identify the needs and wants of your target audience, what people want. If your product fails to identify the needs and wants, then as a business or as a product, it may be a failure. There's a chance of failure. So you need to research the market. You need to look at the bigger picture and see what the company, uh, what people want, what the market wants. And what are you getting in return? So you are fulfilling the needs and wants of the consumer. In return, you get a profit, right? For, uh, you know, private limited companies, it's always profit. Okay, profit means you make money, more money, uh, more money than your expenses. So business means fulfilling the needs and wants of the wider society. If you can do that, then only profit can be generated. And business is not only about fulfilling needs and wants of the wider society. It involves other things like, like managing people, like taking risk. When I started business, I thought, yeah, it's all, it's all about making products, making services, and selling it at a higher cost and making profit. Yes, it is, but then it's more than that. It's about communication. It's about managing people. It's about teamwork. It's about group work. It's about motivation. It's about persistence, right? So business involves, of course, managing people, which is a very, very big thing. It, it involves taking risk. If you don't take risk, then you won't be successful. It is said in business, the bigger risk you take, um, uh, your chances of of uh, you know of success increases, right? 
So this is business. Business means involves managing people, taking risk, fulfilling the needs and wants of the wider society. If you do that, you can generate profits. Now, when you, when you want to start a business, let's say you want to start a small business. Let's say you want to start um, a school or an education institution like us. So what do you need? What do you need? What are the different factors of production do you have? So you need a land. You need an office space. Again, this depends on the business. Now, if you're opening an education institution, you need an office space. If you're, if you're opening a factory, then you need a piece of land, a very big piece of land. Again, that depends on the size. So it will depend on the nature of industry, right? Uh, now, if you want to open an education institution, it must be in the right location where, where, where you have enough students. All those things are there. So you, first of all, you need land. Second, you need labor. You need employees, people to work for you, right? And employees are a very big part of organization because employees will rep, uh, will represent your organization. Okay, um, they will define the quality of of products and services in your company. So that's quite important. Um, then you need capital, you need finance, money, goods, machines. For example, in an education institution, you will require air conditioners. You will require, let's say, table, chairs, uh, furniture. In a factory, it's going to be different. It's going to be machines. Uh, so it will vary from industry to industry, right? Then you need enterprise. Enterprise means you need a leader. You need a management team who will control everything, right? An entrepreneur who will control, who will manage people, who will plan out things, who will come up with creative solutions to problems, who will make innovative products, and who will take decisions. So you need uh, enterprise. And when you're opening a business anywhere, there are external factors. You have government. You have law and order. Now, if you want to open a business... Uh, you can't just open it. You need a permission. You need trade license. You need memorandum of articles. You need memorandum of association. There's so many things. So the government is there, right? Uh, if the government makes a decision, that may impact your business. Uh, think about it. Uh, for example, if the government decides to increase uh, the minimum wages of employees, then it will impact your business, right? If 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 today... Uh, our government, um, uh, you know, takes the decision of closing down all the coaching centers, then we have to close it down. We cannot do anything, right? So government is always there and it may impact you. And not only the government, you have other businesses around you as well. You have competition, okay? You have other companies um, around you. And of course, when you make a product, let's say you've made this product, right? You need to tell people about it, what's good, and, and you need to market it. And that's advertising and promotion. You can do TV advertising. Uh, you can do nowadays, you can do social media advertising, which is very cheap. So these are the different factors of production. You need a land. You need, a la you need labor, employees. You need money. You need furniture. You need machines. You, you need a leader to control the company organization, a proper management team. And there is external factors like government, law and order. You need different licenses, right? Memorandum of association. Um, and and, um, and uh, there are different laws and regulations that you must follow. And there is marketing. You need to inform people about your product. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to comment down on the comment section. So a business. So look at this figure. This is quite interesting. Look at this figure. Um, so a business needs definitely land. Uh, you, you, you may need land for office space or for site, uh, site for buildings. Of course, you need customers because if you don't have customers, you will not be able to sell your product and money will not come in. Okay. You need suppliers and suppliers sometimes... We overlook the importance of suppliers. Suppliers are so important. Now, if I'm making this T-shirt in my garments factory, my supplies for this raw material is so important because if this raw material is not good, then probably um, 
I will not be able to make a good quality T-shirt. If it's a restaurant, if 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 the person who supplies me vegetables or meat, if he's not good, if he does not supply quality food items, then it, that that will impact the quality of my food. So be careful with suppliers. Be strict with suppliers. Don't select suppliers just in terms of price. Oh, they are very cheap and we are going to hire them. No, think in terms of quality because that will impact negatively or positively to your business. And then when we speak about employees in a business, you will have different kind of employees. For example, at FES, at our education institution, uh, we need skilled employees, people with degrees, and, and they are teachers, right? So if I'm hiring a teacher for chemistry, we need uh, someone who's done bachelor's and master's in chemistry. That's skilled. Now, we also need unskilled labor. Unskilled labor means someone, let's say, who cleans the office. For those kind of posts, for those kind of designation, I don't need a degree, and they can be referred to as unskilled. Now, we know traditionally that, that in a business we have permanent employees, people who work full-time, they have to, a, a contract for two, three years, that's fine. And you give them Eid bonuses and festival bonuses. They also get other benefits, cars or fringe benefits. But then in the modern era, we also have temporary employees. Temporary employees means they're not permanent. They're here only for a specific period of time, let's say three months, four months, or one year. Now, why do you want to hire temporary employees? Because, because they're not expensive. They cost less. Because whenever you sign a permanent contract with an employee, you have to pay them bonuses. You have to pay them other benefits. But when you are on temporary contract, then you don't have to pay anything of sorts, just salary. And you call them whenever you want. And that's why in the modern times, people are shifting to um, you know, flexible employment contract and temporary employment contract. So in a company, you may have you know, skilled employees, unskilled employees in temporary or permanent contract. So think about that. And then of course, you need capital, you need money, you need machines, factories, offices. In an education institution, we need machines like um, air conditioners, we need fingerprint machines. Um, we need projectors or smart boards, and it'll it'll vary. Uh, uh, in, to, uh, it'll vary in some other businesses because every business has some specific requirement. And then, of course, we've talked about this. Government is there, uh, law and order, um, and 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 uh, they have specific rules and regulation that we must follow. And then the enterprise, the management, the leader, the, the decision makers who controls the company uh, is, is, of course, there. Great. We're just 30 minutes in. We're doing good. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to comment down on the comment section. Right. Now, now um, let me tell you a, a, a sh short story. So when you look at this picture... You see iPad and 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 uh, laptop and iMac, right? Mouse. Now there was a time when Apple was making more than hundred products before 1990, right? And they were doing too much, too much of things. And there was a time where they almost went bankrupt because they were doing so many things at once. They were making around hundreds of product, right? And in that way, they were wasting a lot of money. And when Steve Jobs again came into the company and he said, we are making too many things, the cost is, um, you know, is at a very high level and, and they need to reduce costs. Now, in businesses, not every time you can do a lot of things. You must focus on making one thing that you're good at, that you're best at. Let's say in, in, in FES, we're really good at personal care. We are good at... Um, you know, the business department and the arts department. We are really good at that. So we are going to focus on that. Let's say your business is very good um, in, in making just um, affordable phones. So just focus on that. Because if you focus on too many things, there's a chance that um, you may be lost. There's a chance that uh, the cost may increase. OK, and this process of focusing on just one thing uh, that you're best at is known as specialization. 
right? So specialization occurs when businesses or people just concentrate on on one thing or on what they're best at. Okay, um, so uh, there we go. Because because nowadays um, the competition is so intense that you cannot do too many things. Instead of making twelve or thirteen kinds of product, uh, think about okay, what am I good at? this one or two things and focus on them because when you do too many things cost will increase it there will be a lot of expenses um and 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 yeah and you will have issues later on now specialization is very important because nowadays you have specialized machinery and technology available widely available okay um so there we go um of, and also, you have a lot of competition. When you have a lot of competition, when you have eight around eight to ten businesses around you, then you really need to be best at. You need to, you really need to do what you're best at and not do everything. Okay. And when you're good at something, you really produce a very good product. Now think about Tesla. Tesla does not does not make normal cars. They does not make bike. They they, uh, they they're not into uh, uh they they don't make bicycles. They don't make computers. They don't make tablets. But they have chosen to focus on making electric cars. Why? Because they're best at doing that. And they also produce batteries for other cars and other gadgets because because. Uh, you know, they invented this whole new battery system in cars, and they're best at that. They have their own battery factory, the Giga factory, right? And that's why they've chosen on just one thing. And and when when companies chooses on on to focus on one thing, they produce a very good quality product. And you can see that Tesla cars, in terms of quality, they're very good, and they've reinvented the whole. Um, the whole car industry, uh, I must say, right? And and this is why the living standard of, of people will increase, right? Because now you are getting to experience really good products. Same with Apple. They focus on phones, tablets, and computers. And therefore, they've just only focused on two, three things. And therefore, they can make really good products on those areas. And that will increase your living standard because... You're getting to experience those quality products, okay? Now, there's there are some really good advantages of specialization. Uh, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to comment down on the comment section. The first advantage of specialization is, is you're trained in one task. Every day, let's say, you are putting screens on this phone. So when you're doing this task, putting screens on the phone, you become really efficient. You become an expert. Your productivity level increases, right? And when you are expert, when you're doing, when you're putting screens, um, you know, very quickly, the cost will decrease. So when workers become efficient and productive, costs will de decrease, right? Um, so that's one advantage. The second advantage is less time is wasted because you're just doing one thing every day and and very less time is wasted so that's the advantages of specialization but however there are two sides of the coin always and we have disadvantages as well when you do one thing for example i've given you this example so when you put screens on your phone every day you become bored and when you become bored you're demotivated your efficiency might fall right so worker workers can become bored so that's a great disadvantage um if one worker is absent no one else can do the job because for example let's say i'm in charge in putting the screens and today i'm ab absent because of some reason and nobody knows how to do this job because uh because everybody was busy with their own work so that's bad right so what happens if i'm absent if i don't come to work nobody else can replace me Okay, and, and that's not good for the business. Production will be stopped. Production will be halted, right? Great. If you have any questions, um, let me know. We're moving on to the next topic. Now, adding value. Adding value is a very, very interesting concept. Now, now, look at this, right? Look at this carefully. Let's say you have a screen, okay? You have a microchip. You have audio sets. 
you have a battery, you have an aluminium body, you have speakers, okay? You have this individual items, separate spare parts. Are they useless or useful? Of course, when they're separate, they're useless because we can't use them. Now, in order to buy all these separate parts, you have spent $100, your expenses. So you have all these spare parts. They're useless because they're all separate. But when they come together, okay, uh, when they come together, it becomes a phone. And when it's a phone, it's quite useful because now on that phone, you have a software. You can make calls. Um, you can send messages. You can do video calls. You can watch videos and do hundreds of tasks. Now, the selling price of this phone, let's say, is $800. So added value is $800 minus $100. $100 because that's your original expenses, right? So $800 minus $100 is $700. So your added value is $700, right? So added value means when you take things separately and when you assemble them together, when everything comes together, it becomes something very useful out of nothing. Just think about this. You had screens, microchip, audio sets, battery, body, speakers, all separate. They're useless. But you found an innovative way to combine them together and create a device that is remarkable in its own class. And th these parts separately cost costed you $800. Uh, $100. And when you compile them as a phone, you can sell it in $800. So you're adding a value of 700. Now, let me uh, mind you one thing that this is not profit. Profit will be you have to, whatever uh, value you've added, you've added $700. You have to minus expenses because you have wages, you have rent, you have fixed cost, you have variable cost. Okay, so when you minus that from 700, you get the original profit. So added value is not as the same as profit. Added value is how much you've added right? How much value you've added. The more value you add, the better it is for business. And the more cost you control, the better it is for business. Now, instead of $100, can I bring it down to $90 or $95 or $80, uh, right? Uh, the lower you bring it down, the better it is for companies. Okay, but again, you have to be careful of quality. Now, um, in bringing the price down, if it impacts your quality, then it's a problem. Okay, so think about that. Think about that. Uh, so let me show you this chart. So this is the selling price of the product, $800. And this is your expenses, $100. Okay, so when you minus $800 minus $100, this is, this is what you've added, $700. Okay, this is not the profit. This is $700. Now, if you want to know the profit, you have to minus expenses which is wages fixed cost variable cost and so on so so a business adds value to raw material so when you take raw materials when you take different parts spare parts when it all comes together it something happens a magic happens so for example this t-shirt this was a mare it was nothing you had thread and from the thread uh, the textile industry will make uh, cl uh, the, the cloth the raw material and then when you stitch it together there comes a t-shirt. This is valuable. The cloth itself, the thread itself is not valuable. They're useless. But when, when it combines together, when everything comes together, you're adding value. You're making something. So on that note, I will end the class today. So we had Business Studies, Cambridge O-Levels, Chapter 1. I've just started today. This is for our young le learners who are starting off business. Um, uh, if you want to know the basics, this is... This is the right thing for you. Uh, business studies, Cambridge, O levels. The syllabus is is fantastic. So I have a class at one o'clock. Thank you very much. I will see you guys um, again tomorrow. It was a good class. Thank you for being patient. I know sometimes my classes are are huge. Uh, if you haven't liked our page, please like our Facebook page. Just type in Fires Education Services. Uh, we have a fantastic uh, YouTube channel. Again, just type in Fires Education Services and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much. I will see you soon.